away the day my sins were washed away the day death was beaten and rescued for you A- anybody here remember that day that glorious day oh, 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 oh. that's why that's why you've never been the same again folks are looking at you funny wondering what's with him what's with her but I wish I wish you could look at your naysayer in the eyes I wish you could tell them it's Jesus it's Jesus that is with you and that's why you're forever changed can I get a shout of praise in the house this morning oh yeah 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 that's why you talk the way you talk that's why you walk the way you walk and and let me tell you something that is why you are who you are today because because your friends that you jet with they want you to do what you used to do with them but you know you're changed forever and you can't do what you used to do with them anymore and so they start hating on you but you can't meet Jesus and be the same again can I get a witness in this house church don't you don't you thank the Lord church don't you thank the Lord for all our young people up in the stage and in the back and all around us our young people at Wilma that God has given to us and their director Charlene and helper Paulo we just thank God for them and uh, don't you appreciate what the Lord has done this morning in the lives of all those who got baptized I got only two people in my notes Sierra and Auntie Eileen young and old but God decided to give us three more is it three more I can't even count was it three extra he he decided to give us three more with good measure pressed down shaking together running over that is our God church that's our God when you go all out for him let me say this to you I said it already people are out on our street this morning parading going out of the coming out of the closet parading and they're doing with pride and dignity they call it pride day if you go all out for God young people if you go all out for God I stand and I testify you to to you today that God is no debtor of a man because anyone who puts his faith and trust in God the Bible said shall never be disappointed that's our God remain standing with me as we read from the word of God my assignment this morning as we continue in our message series know thy God my assignment this morning finds me in the Old Testament book of Malachi If you are Italian, if you're Italian, you call it Malachi. But it's not pronounced Malachi, it's pronounced Malachi. And my Bible is open to Malachi chapter 3. We're going to be reading one verse only here, one verse. Verse 6. For I, the Lord, do not change. Therefore, you, O sons of Jacob, are not consumed. For I, the Lord, do not change. 
as you're taking your seat turn to the person standing next to you and tell them you have no clue who you're sitting next to mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, you have no clue you have no clue you may be seated you may see that you may be seated I, I, I may look I may look I may look like a cute I may look like a cute little church girl but you have no clue I, I may look like an innocent little choir boy <laughs> but you have no because the Bible says in Daniel chapter 11 verse 32 those who know their God Daniel eleven thirty two. those who know their God shall be what oh I, I can't hear you church they shall be what and do what so don't you sit there judging me thinking what you see is what you get because how many here know looks can be deceiving oh I'm already preaching so so turn to your neighbor one more time and this time you're not gonna just tell them you're gonna warn them and say you have no clue who you're sitting next to mm-hmm you, ha you have no clue you have no clue they, they still didn't get it but you have no clue because the Bible says those who know their God shall be strong and do exploit we have been doing exploit this morning from when Jamal McGlore, former NBA player, walked in this morning with Councillor Thompson to the kids who got baptized and my dear Auntie Eileen too. And three kids who didn't even plan to get baptized who got baptized. We've been doing exploit. As we continue in our study, Know Thy God, we've established the fact that the god we worship is the omnipotent god meaning my god is so big so strong and so mighty there's nothing my god cannot do you, you all remember that song in sunday school You sing that song with excitement the question is now that you're older and bigger do you still believe that your God is so big oh I just thought I should ask because sometimes we get bigger and we get too big for our breaches is not only the omnipotent God we also know is the omniscience omni or science science knowing he is the omniscience God is also the omnipresent God for is everywhere at anywhere at uh, you know I'm not talking about city TV everywhere no 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 I'm talking about our God who is also good all the time and all the time he is is love but he's also the consuming fire and the last time we were together we got to know him more as the God of second chances But today, I wonder, do you know him as the God who never changes? I, I want to talk to you about the God who never changes. Now, that's good news. Somebody ought to be shouting right about now that your God, I, I say your God, is the God who will never change or switch on you. Oh, that's good, that's good, that's good if you know the pain and if you know the agony of, of being switched on we live in a world that is constantly changing have you noticed that 
as soon as you turn around, something else is switched on you. It, it, did you know that 90%, 90% of all the items in the supermarket that you buy today in the supermarket, 90% of all the items didn't exist 10 years ago. I read somewhere that 50% of college graduates, Dickie Neal, are entering into a job market that didn't exist when they were born. I was at the graduation this past Thursday, sitting on the platform because I'm the co-chair at Northern Secondary School, as you know, and um, uh, the, the trustee was talking about that fact, that these graduates, those of you who are here, sitting here, you're going to be going to a job that was not even created and hasn't even been dreamt about yet. This is the age of high tech and computer, you all. Everyone in this room, if you have your cell phone or your smartphone, take it out. Take it out. Right now. Take it out. Don't worry. I'm not going to hold you up. Just take it out. Take it out. Come on. Show off. Show off what you've got. Everybody, wave your phone. Wave your phone. Show it off. Show it off. I I'm still carrying. I'm proudly carrying my Android. I still use my Android. I I'm proud of it. Show, show your phone. Okay, good, good. I know I'm an old goat. I know this is dinosaur. But, but need I remind you, need I remind you that once upon a time, this android used to be the in thing. Now, now, it's a dinosaur. And the Galaxy S4 that some of you are probably, yeah, I got it, Pastor. The Galaxy S4 and the smartphone you're showing off today is going to soon become the dumb phone tomorrow. Because we live in an unstable, changing world. One, one man puts it like this. One man puts it like this. My great-grandfather rode a horse and he was afraid of a train. My grandfather rode a train, but he was afraid of a car. My father rode a car, but he was afraid of an airplane. I ride in an airplane, but I'm afraid of who knows what's coming down the pipe. <laughs> Today, you can have breakfast in London and eat lunch in New York and dinner in Honolulu change everybody says change. change we are changing too have, have someone anybody here noticed that we're getting we're all getting older every day is it just me does anyone does anybody remember when our kids used to look like this? <laughs> that was nine years ago. That was nine years ago in this place. Now, get a kick out of this. Have you seen, have you seen these kids lately? That's, that, that's Adam looking like a gorilla there. <laughs> you, 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 you saw him nine years ago. We're all changing. Even people change as they get older. The Apostle Paul puts it bluntly in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16. He puts it bluntly, saying, outwardly, outwardly we're wasting away. Thanks, Paul. <laughs> Isn't that depressing? Isn't that depressing? But true? What he is saying is, I know you young people. 
You young people listening to me today, this morning on your youth Sunday, you think you'll be forever young. You sing it too. Forever young. But Paul says to tell you, sooner or later, old man wrinkle will come for you. If you have any serious doubt, if you have any serious doubt as to whether or not that is true, just take a look at the face of somebody older next to you right now. <laughs> take, take a look at the face of somebody who is proud to say they are older right now. <laughs> We're told by dermatologists, we're told by dermatologists that from the age of 25 on, certain changes start to kick in in your outer layer. Your skin starts to lose its elasticity and Botox starts to appeal to you. Now, now I, I, don't, I don't mean to be grim. I don't mean to be grim in this message this morning. But if you are over 30 years old, don't raise up your hand. <laughs> if you are over 30 years old, you're going to start losing brain cells at alarming rate. Scientists tell us that you lose about 3 million brain cells a day. My, my wife is going, no wonder. <laughs> No, no wonder I keep looking for my glasses. <laughs> and the glasses is right up in her head. No, 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 no. Now, if we all keep, if we all keep very quiet, shh, everybody keep quiet. Shh, 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 shh. If we all keep very quiet, we're going to hear some of them brain cells dying right now. <laughs> No, 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 seriously, seriously. I, I, as, as, soon as, as soon as I left my 20s, I started noticing I was losing hair on my head and it stopped growing where I wanted it to grow. And, 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 and now that I'm clocking 50, it's boldly going to where no hair has ever gone before. <laughs> no, 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 I'm telling the joke on myself, but that's true. Places like my nose <laughs> and, 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 and hair is growing out of my ears. <laughs> now, now, when I start getting nose hair trimmer for Christmas from my children, <laughs> yeah, y'all should be feeling pity for your pastor. And I know some of you young people here are thinking you would always be Peter Pan or the evil mom in the movie Tangled. You're thinking you would always enjoy the fountain of youth. That's okay. That's okay. Stay in denial. But those of us who are in our 40s and 50s and 60s and 70s and it is did I leave anybody behind <laughs> those of us who are older we want you to know that we understand and we love you all but there is a phenomenon called change that hits everyone right from birth to the time we're buried in the grave. Can I get a witness here from somebody who is going through some changes right now? Tell your neighbor, I'm changing, I'm changing, I'm changing, I'm changing. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've been old. I've been young. I've been young. I used to be a young... Uh-oh. I, 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 I,
uh, what do you how do you think i i caught this chick here <laughs> I used to be young the psalmist says but now I'm old my world is changing on me things are switching on me I'm changing too Deacon Kuma at times it's confusing other times it's annoying most times is disconcerting that things ain't working like they used to work. <laughs> lately, 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 I've been discovering that I have body parts I never knew existed before. <laughs> N now I know, now I know they exist because they aren't working properly. You, you know how they notify you? You know how the body part don't notify you? When something go wrong, they notify you. That, hey, hello, I'm here. You didn't know I'm here. <laughs> and oh, somebody here, somebody here, somebody here. Somebody here, your world, your world may be turning, your world may be turning on you like as the world turns. The days of our lives may be fleeting. Oh, I feel soap uprich right now. <laughs> or you may think you are young and the restless. <laughs> but I am here to remind you that though your world may change on you, and though people may switch on you, because people change too, there's one. There's one who will never change on you. Because he, he alone, he alone remains the same in the midst of an ever-changing world. There's someone, there's someone yet you can depend on. Young people, listen to me very carefully. I know time is gone. I may not finish this message, but there's one still that you can depend on never to switch on you. Friends may fail you. Foes may assail you. But there's one you can lean on <laughs> to get you through the vicissitudes of life. Because he remains the same. Is Jesus. The great I am. He showed up to Moses. He said, Moses, I am that I am. And the Bible says in Hebrews, in Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8, for Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today. Uh, when else, church? Oh, I can't hear you, church. Everybody shout forever. You know what forever is? Forever means forever. Forever it won't change on you. Forever it won't switch on you. Because if God was God back then for you in the Great Depression, and if God was God, I I'm talking to our seniors right now. If God was God back then for you, in the 70s during the hippies if God was God back there for you in the 80s the financial crisis of the 80s sister Marilyn yes if he was God for you through the recoveries of the 90s don't you think it can be God for these young people in 2013. Definitely. Oh, oh, talk to me, somebody. Talk to me, somebody. See, see, 
one of our problem, one of our problem as modern people, we call ourselves modern people, the, uh, the, 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 the Renaissance people, or, or we call ourselves the, 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 the pluralistic people that just like to keep our options open and, and, uh, and, uh, and, and, and show off everything. One of the problems with modern people is we tend to think we live in a different world. Listen to me very carefully with this. We tend to think we live in a different world from those in the Bible. True, true. We don't sacrifice animals like they did. How many of you brought a goat into the house this morning to be sacrificed? My point. True, we live in a different world. I, I, I know, I know we, don't, we don't have harems. We don't have harems like Solomon did. He had 700 wives and 300 concubines, mistresses. I didn't make that up. Read it for yourself in 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 3. First of all, first of all, I, I don't know why any man in his right mind would want, to, would want more than one woman. I, I don't know why a man in his right mind would want more than one wife. I have only one, and I'm still... <laughs> I just moved far away. <laughs> true, 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 true. I know some thinkers are here. True. In terms, in terms of time and space and culture, the world of the Bible is long away from us. And for that simple reason, we think that what they went through was quite different from what we are going through today. So we read of the God of the Bible shutting the mouths of lions for Daniel and his three Hebrew bros. And we go, yes, he did it back then. But let me ask you, has that same God ever shut the mouth of the lions in your life? You know your, the mouths of your player haters? Or, or, or we read, or we read, God parting the Red Sea for Moses and the children of Israel. And we say that was back then. Let me ask you, has that same God ever made a way for you where there was no way? Oh, you're not talking back to me right now. You're not talking back to me. Because you all know, because you all know, you all know that it doesn't matter how your world is changing on you. You still know what Malachi said is true. For I hear the Lord say through the prophet, for I am the Lord. I change not. Meaning, it's true that in terms of time and space, the Moses and the Daniels and the Davids and the historical epochs in which they live are long ways from ours. I'm not doubting that. But listen to this very carefully. The link between the people in the Bible and us is found not in the time warp. The link between the people in the Bible and us is God. The link is God himself who does not change. Oh, the people change in the Bible. We are changing. But the God we both serve is still the same. So if he did it back then, guess what? He can do it Somebody shout, do it again, Lord! Yeah. Hallelujah. As it was in the beginning, so it is now, and ever shall. I mean, David was so stupefied. He was so mystified 
by this God that mortal words eluded him that he could he could he, that all he could say of this immutable God in Psalm 102 verse 25 to 26 27 was this all he could say was this of old you founded the earth and the heavens are thy work of your hands verse 26 even they will perish but you endure and all of them will wear out like a garment like clothing you will change them and they will be changed you see that things change change is inevitable verse 27 but thou art the same Ooh! but thou art the same clouds form and clouds go mountains come and mountains melt oceans come oceans get washed away people come people go but thou art the same and your years will not come to an end glory to God I don't know about you but knowing the God who never changes who will never switch on you or bail out on me does something good to my spirit it means I can go to sleep at night and I'll never have to worry about waking up and finding that he has jumped sheep on me somebody here isn't that the kind of God you want to know you don't want to know a God who goes up when down Jones goes up and a God who goes down when down Jones goes down but you want a God who is steady he doesn't have more swings on you come on now he's steady like a rock immovable unshakable oh somebody and even unstoppable I'm wondering is there anyone in here who knows this God I'm talking about let the Redeemer the Lord say so in your praise this morning we don't have time you all have to come back for part two of this message that's just introduction oh yes uh, this is 19 and I have 35 Oh, oh no no not 35 I have 40 because there's more notes here that I, I won't even get to so y'all have to come back next week for part two to be continued that was just to whet your appetite about this God who never changes but as I close we need to get something straight when we talk about what theologians calls the immutability of God the immutability of God that is the God who never changes what exactly are we talking about because the last thing I want to do is to get you more confused than you were before you came in because most folk are so way out to lunch when it comes to their understanding of what it means that God is unchanging. First of all, I'm going to finish with this. Let me tell you what immutability does not mean. And then I'll dismiss you. What immutability does not mean. Put it up, my dear. You're doing very well. It does not mean that God is frozen. The Bible says God doesn't change. But that doesn't mean he's frozen in time. Have you ever met some chosen frozen Christians lately? You know, they're always looking like this. <laughs> and they, so, their face is drawn and, and they look like, like the, the rock of Gilbrotter. I will not be moved. And, and 
that, they're looking that, pretending like they're spiritual, when in actuality, what they have is indigestion. <laughs> no, 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 no. When we say God is immutable, when we say God is unchanging, we don't mean God is static and unwilling to budge. Because that won't be true of what we know that God said of himself. Through the prophet Isaiah, in Isaiah chapter 43 verse 19, let me read it for you, saying, Behold, I will do something new. Hmm. Oh, God is doing something new in this church. God is doing something new in the life of somebody here this morning. I don't know who you are, but God brought you this morning to hear his word from the prophet. He said, Behold, I will do something new. Now it will spring forth. Will you not be aware of it? I will even make a roadway in the wilderness. Rivers in the desert. See, he is not static. He is not frozen in time. And I don't know who this message is for, but if you're facing a roadblock right now, and you're hemmed in, and, and you know that you know that you know that God can still make a way where there's no way, and he can make rivers in the desert, lift up your hands. Lift up your hands and say with me, Lord, do it again. Do something new in my life, in my church, in my family. You are the same yesterday and today and forevermore. Amen. Give him a praise. Let's stand to our feet. Let's stand to our feet. You all have to come back next week. I just gave you what immutability doesn't mean. That your world may be changing on you. And believe you me, Uncle Tim, the world is changing. Oh, yes. When I left Nigeria, over 25 plus years ago, we had only 12 states. Yeah. That is you. By me, three. Three. When you left in the 70s, in the 60s. 60s. Yes. We're, we're reminiscing here. Okay. Three. Three. If you go look at the map, they have states in Nigeria that I, I can't even pronounce. I think they're from another place. Our world is changing. Let me tell you something, people of God. The church is changing too. If you don't know the church is changing, you've buried your head in the sand for so long. But why won't the, God, the church of God change? God said, I'm doing a new thing. You can't keep God frozen in time. Even though everything around us is changing, here, church, is the blessing. We serve a God who remains the same. And that's okay for him to be the same because you don't want a God who fluctuates mood swing you don't know if you should go pray to him today because he may be in a bad mood you don't want a God that is unpredictable you don't want the opposite either you don't want the opposite either because the Bible says in Malachi chapter 3 verse uh, 6 that we read, For I am the Lord God. I do not change. Because if he changes, he said, You sons of Jacob, you would have been consumed. So you don't want him to change? Can you imagine if God stopped being loving? Can you imagine if God stopped being the God of grace? Ha! You don't want him to change. I'm glad it doesn't change. I'm glad it doesn't change. And that is a good security blanket for his church. 
that things around us may change and we may not have a clue where we're going but we have a God who knows the beginning to the end come back next Sunday and I'll share with you the three things of what it means that God is unchanging 